guys, it's Ty with Ty the Dog Guy on the Daily, and I want to talk about uh, a potential problem that people get themselves into because they misunderstand their dog's needs. And so, uh, as dog trainers, I always kind of joke that, you know, if you go poll dog trainers, you're not going to get the same information from any of us. We tend to disagree about everything. Um, and sometimes I think it's just for sport. You know, we could see what's the best color to train best color shoes to train dogs in and and dog trainers will suddenly have an opinion that black shoes are better or gray shoes are better or red shoes are better the reality is dog trainers don't agree on very much but there's one thing that i found that most dog trainers actually agree on and that's to not take your dogs to a dog park dog parks tend to tend to create inappropriate relationships they create a lot of fear they create a lot of anxiety um, at our company the majority of the aggression that we see we can trace it back to like dog parks. Um, a lot of the anxiety we see can be traced back to dog parks. Anyways, dog parks are just, and I know, I know every time I say this, I always inevitably get like an email like, my dog goes to dog parks and it's totally fine. I get that, you know, um, this guy can smoke cigarettes for 90 years and not get cancer. That doesn't mean that cigarettes are a good thing. Um, you know, when a ton of other people are getting cancer from them. And so it's the same with dog parks. There's plenty of dogs, I'm sure, that can go to dog parks forever and not have negative consequences. But that number is not a good percentage. You know, uh, a big chunk of dogs that go to dog parks have problems. And so, um, but when I talk to folks about, you know, dog parks, I'm trying to get to the root of what's going on because I don't want to be, you know, when I'm having an initial consultation with somebody, and they say, my dog goes to a dog park. I don't want to be that jerk that's like, oh, your dog shouldn't go to a dog park. Um, that's bad. You, you know, um, I don't want to be that guy. And so I want to like get to the bottom of like, why do they want this? Like, what, what are they wanting their dog to get? And so a lot of them will say things like, well, my dog needs to play with other dogs. Or another one um, that I'll see is, uh, well, we got two puppies at the same time so that, um, uh, so that they had, you know, because he needs to play and, and he was going to be bored. Um, and so, and again, that's, it's not bad to get two puppies. I've had tons of clients over the years that get two puppies and we've made it work wonderfully. There's been some that have been a big challenge and, and, and I see people all the time that get two puppies and it doesn't work, you know, because they're not maybe doing some things wrong. But anyways, getting two puppies isn't wrong. Um, the, the mindset behind going to the dog park of like, I really want my dog to play with other dogs. That's not a, the wrong mindset. But what I try to help folks understand is what their dog actually needs versus what they as a human thinks their dog needs. So what does your dog need? Your dog needs food, your dog needs water, uh, your dog needs outlets. Now outlets, you know, uh, when I talk about outlets, I'm talking about outlets for their energy, for their drive. So some dogs outlets might be using their nose, playing some nose games. Other dogs, it might be structured walks. Most dogs, structured walks is a good outlet. Um, chasing a tennis ball and then play is, is a big outlet. But play with other dogs is not a need. If your dog goes his entire life without playing with another dog, your dog can still have an incredibly fulfilled life. Incredibly fulfilled life. Um, and in lots of cases, a more fulfilled and a happier life than lots of dogs who are going to dog parks and getting accosted and threatened and things like that by other dogs. But let me repeat this. Your dog does not need to play with other dogs to have a happy life. If your dog is at home, so as I'm sitting here, you know, and I've got one dog on, on the floor there and another dog on the bed there, um, these dogs do not play together. They don't want to. This is an old lady here. And if you're not watching the video, I'm pointing to my old dog, Honey. She's 14, almost 14. And this is Chip. Um, Chip is a year and a half. I'm pretty sure Chip would like to play with her, but Honey doesn't want to. Um, but anyways, what I'm getting at is they're sitting here and, and no part of their mind are they like, I need to play, I need to play, I need to play. You know, it's not like, they're like, gosh, I wish I could get out and go to that dog park so that I can play because I need that. Now, if I take, if I was to take Chocolate Chip to a dog park, she might have a good time playing or something like that. But it's not like she needs it. She needs food, she needs water, and she needs outlets. Um, and, and play can be accomplished with me. I can play with her. You can play with your dog. You can, 
get out a frisbee or a tennis ball. You can get on the ground and, and roughhouse and play. Um, so play might be a need on a certain level, but your dog does not need that to be with other dogs. It could be a whole variety of other ways. And so what I'm getting at here is not to say, don't let your dog play with other dogs. That's totally cool. If that's one outlet that we can give a dog, whether it's, you know, perhaps you've got a structured daycare. You know, I run a structured daycare and it's a wonderful thing for dogs who want to play. They don't need it, but for dogs who want to play and want to do it in a structured way. Lots of our clients will do play dates with their dogs, you know, and, and they've got neighbors or friends and they can allow their dog to play. So playing is not the problem. Thinking your dog needs it from other dogs is the problem because that's what leads people to get second dogs when they don't even have the first dog trained. That's what people, you know, leads people to get, uh, to go to the dog park when it's not a good place for their dog, where their dog's going to develop problems and issues and challenges from the dog park. And so, like I say, it's important to understand what your dog needs versus what you think the dog needs and what you want the dog to have. In a perfect world, would I let my dog go to a dog park and play with other dogs and, and run around and have a great time? Yeah. I don't live in a perfect world. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, where a big chunk of the dogs at the dog park have aggression and anxiety problems. And I don't want to, I always kind of joke, you know, I don't want to go socialize my kids at the prison. Uh, and that's the same reason I don't want to take my dogs to the dog park. You know, there's, it's, it's not a good environment for them to learn good things about social interactions and things like that. And so instead, you know, they're going to get little play groups here or there, maybe at my daycare, maybe like dogs that we know. And I'm going to play with them and my kids are going to play with them and they're going to live very fulfilled, very happy lives um, because they're getting exactly what they need and exactly what they want.